Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India about uh, this thermodynamics of combustion and with a thought process from Lavoisier, right, who says that I consider nature a vast chemical laboratory in which all kinds of composition and decomposition are formed. Vegetation is a basic instrument the creator uses to set all the nature in motion. This is a very important prof and profound statement, which you know our ancestors were very much aware. That is where we were a agriculture based country and chemical reactions always takes place. And whatever the chemical reaction takes place in nature, those are profound and without any effect. That is a very important point. When we talk about chemical reaction, we will be talking about that. And uh, as we discuss in the last lecture about various you know like heat of formation, heat of reactions, heat of combustions and other thing how to calculate. Today what we will do like we will be looking at you know just to uh, take an example about that and see how we can use. For example, like determine the standard heat of reaction at 298.15 Kelvin for famous water shift reaction as given below. You know this is a very important water shift reaction, which is basically one mole of carbon dioxide reacting with hydrogen. It is going to the carbon monoxide and water. Of course, keep in mind that all these components are in gaseous phase. Now, question arises whether I can get back you know uh, carbon monoxide can be reacted with the oxidizer to give me what carbon dioxide am i right so if you look at like nature works in cycle whether i can use this as a cycle or not of course that is not the with this example because we are interested to determine the standard heat of reaction at 298.15 kelvin and this is quite famous, you must be aware about this reaction that is water shift reaction. How to go about it? I do not know this heat of reaction of this you know of this particular reaction, then what I will have to do. But however, I will be knowing several other reactions right. If I know those reactions, can I really get this reactions heat of reaction? That means, heat of reaction of this water shift reaction can I get? And now, let us look at how we can get that is the following heat of reactions at 291 known like for example, like C O 2 is going to the C plus O 2 right. We know that right and we also similarly know C plus half O 2 going to the C O right. The carbon is reacting with oxygen going to the C O. And we know that hydrogen reacting with oxygen, half oxygen and going to the water. If I know these three reactions, you know, if you add all these things, can I get this water shift reaction? Yes or no? Right. If you look at I can cancel this out and this oxygen, you know, like uh, about this half and half, this I can cancel. What I land it CO2 plus hydrogen is going to the C O plus water right. But I must know this like heat of reaction, heat of reaction for this C O 2 and plus C plus O 2 is basically 393.51 kilojoule. Of course, that is at 298.15 Kelvin right. If I similarly, I know this reaction and keep in mind that the earlier reaction was positive and this is negative. That means, the earlier reaction was 
endothermic and this is exothermic reaction, right. And similarly, the uh, heat of reaction for the third reaction that is hydrogen plus oxygen going to water is again an exothermic reaction. So, if I just add this together as I told you earlier that what I will get? I will get C O 2 plus hydrogen going to the product C O and water and if I add together I will get this you know total heat of reaction for this reaction is equal to 41.16 kilojoule. Just I will add all these three together, but what is the basis for it? From where? How can you do that? Is it right or wrong? Can anybody tell me? Huh? That is basically known as Hess law, which states that resultant heat evolve or absorb at constant pressure or a constant volume, right? For a given chemical reaction, is same whether it takes place in one or many steps. By the way, this Hess law comes from where? Stems from which law? But this is not really the actual law, but people call it. Okay. It has come from your first law of thermodynamics, right? And this is a beautiful concept which is being you know known as a Hess law, which is just extension of the first law of thermodynamics. Whatever the path it takes, you know, as long as it is having two end points, you know, then it will be dependent on the end point. That means it is independent of path taken by the reactions. So, that is the basis of the first law of thermodynamics. If you remember, like we are talking about internal energy, it is a property of the system. So, and this is the one. Now, what we will do? We have now worked with this heat of formation, heat of reaction, then you know, like how to get a heat of reaction by knowing the elementary reaction like C O plus R O O 2 C O kind of things, right. Now, why you will do all this thing? What far will do? Of course, you can say that I need to uh, calculate or estimate the heat of combustion, that is why I need this information. Keep in mind that these heat of formations data are available in the table, tabular form like Janov table. Of course, in my book uh, Fundamental Combustion, it is given on the back side in the appendix, you can use those data. <coughs> now, question there is, is there apart from estimating the heat of reaction or the heat of combustion, whether we can use those data for something else? Can anybody tell me? how we can use those data, which is essential when we talk about combustion. See, we need to find out what will be the maximum temperature one we can think of, right. That is we call it as a adiabatic flame temperature. That is the final temperature attained by the burner under adiabatic condition is known as adiabatic flame temperature, right. It can be a burner like for example, we have taken a burner in which 1 kilo mole of methane is entering into the burner, where it is reacting with 2 kilo moles of oxidizer. Of course, all these reactant that is methane and oxygen are at 25 degrees Celsius and 0.1 mega Pascals, right. Okay. Now, if you look at that it is going to a product this C O 2 and water, right. And what will be the temperature here at the product? Of course, it may be at the pressure of 0 0.1 mega Pascal and keep in mind that if I take this as my burner, this is my burner, right. What will be it is? It is basically I can take this as a control volume, this is my control volume and no heat is going out of this burner, right. And what are the assumptions we need to make? We will have to say that in the steady process, change in kinetic energy and change in you know potential energy is 0, 0, right. And no work interactions is taking place, right. And there is no heat interaction as well right and it is a flow open system because 
some fuel and oxidizer is coming, getting burnt and is going out. But there might be a situation where the flow would not be taking place. Okay. Are you getting point? So, then how to handle that you need to worry about, but we are now considering about a flow process or in a burner. right? So, if I will apply this first law of thermodynamics, you know for determining the adiabatic temperature, do not you think it will be sufficient or you need to know something more about it? Is it sufficient? It will be sufficient provided if we know that product is C O 2 and water, okay. but in real situation it need not to be. For the simplicity sake, we are considering the product to be carbon dioxide and water. Okay. For the time being, let us do that when we apply this first law of thermodynamic under the condition of you know assumption I have stated just now for a control volume you know or a open system that is H p is equal to H r right. And this what you will temperature you will get is basically T adiabatic right. This is the T adiabatic will be because the no heat is going out of the system. So, all the heat will be there. So, whatever temperature I will get I call it as adiabatic temperature. So, therefore, the product will be dependent on adiabatic it will be function of adiabatic temperature and pressure of course, pressure I am assuming it to be same as that of inlet. Can I assume that pressure or it will be changing? Will it be changing or it will be remaining constant? Huh? What will happen? The pressure will be remaining almost constant, right? Because this is a constant pressure process we are assuming. Okay, and what about heat of reaction? Heat of reaction is basically N i H i, and N i is the number of moles, right? Participating reactant. In this case, it is a methane and oxidizer, whereas H i is the heat of formation of individual species. And keep in mind that this heat of formation for individual species will be having what you call uh, sorry the heat of the enthalpy of individual species will be having two component one is this is heat of formation at standard state right and this portion is known as sensible enthalpy we have studied in the last lecture and this is integrated you know is a T naught to T particular temperature right. Because the T naught at which all the data will be given all the heat of formation data will be given and C p keep in mind is a function of temperature right. I cannot take out because temperature will be very high. For example, if the inlet temperature is 298 Kelvin what will be the adiabatic temperature what will be the order in case of a methane oxidizer, it will be very high, it will be around maybe 3000 Kelvin, right. If it is air, it will be lower, right, because nitrogen is there, which is an inert gas. So, therefore, we need to, we cannot really assume that C p is not a function of temperature, rather it is constant. We cannot afford to do that in this case, what we had done earlier while handling the compressible flow. So, similarly the total enthalpy of the product is summation of N i and H i, H i is the enthalpy of individual species and it is having two what you call term here, one is heat of formation of the species the product and of course, the sensible enthalpy. Keep in mind that this is being integrated from T naught that is the inlet temperature sorry that is the uh, what you call the standard temperature T naught to T adiabatic right. Okay. So, what we will do we will just uh, substitute this in this equation you know if I look at this equation 1 right. If I say this is the equation 1 if I will substitute H r and H p in this equation 1 I will get an expression right. And then let us look at at 298 what do we call this is basically heat of reaction right 
heat of reaction HR, we know that by definition N i H f i with respect to standard condition and similarly, uh, for the reactant that is N i H f i with respect to standard condition, this is our heat of reaction. If I substitute look at this equation 1 and substitute those values, we will get the sensible enthalpy, this is change in sensible enthalpy is equal to basically you know N i for the product and uh, you know N i I can take and C p i t d t. And similarly, for the reactant you know N i C p d t integrated over T naught to T u and T u to T adiabatic you know, because that is the inlet uh, te temperature what would be and which is equal to what and this is the heat of reaction you know this this portion that is the heat of reaction. That means, this data I can get from what like if you look at this data as heat of formation from table right I can get provided I know what is n i that means, each stoichiometric or the you know number of moles if you look at I must know right for individual species, then only I can get. But do we really know that in real situation? We do not really know and those things will be dependent on temperature. For the simplicity sake, I am again repeating that is we will be use uh, assuming the product to be carbon dioxide and water or something else, but it must be known for the time being we are assuming. So, when you do that, then we can find out what will be T i d provided we know that how this C p is varying. C p is basically not only dependent on the species, this is the species you know that is I h species, it can be methane, it can be oxygen, it can be carbon dioxide, it can be water anything. It will be dependent on the temperature like these are coefficients you know coefficients which are are to be obtained from the table for a particular species right and these are of course, a polynomial which being fit. And you will see that from Janet table this will be valid for certain range these coefficients another set of coefficient will be used for the higher temperature you know that you will see. Now, let us just to say that you know it is uh, let us see that how the C p is varying with uh, temperature let us look at a plot. If you look at C p for the spaces like hydrogen, oxygen, water, carbon dioxide is varying with temperature of course, for a monoatomic you know molecule it does not vary and we do not use these spaces particularly for our re combustion reaction. However, we use CO 2, water, oxygen, hydrogen, methane, propane all those things and several other spaces. So, we cannot afford to say that it is remaining constant whenever we are talking about you know uh, combustion problem particularly, where the temperature will be quite high or the change in temperature will be quite high. So, you should keep in mind this thing. Now, what is the meaning of this you know what really we are doing if you look at that is the reactant is going to the product for the same temperature as a result some heat being released right. And this heat being utilized to enhance this temperature of the product to adiabate right. If you look at actually is it happening no just for the simplicity to make you understand what is happening I have drawn that actual process is going in this way. That means, reactant is going to the product with having a temperature adiabatic temperature higher temperature you know right. So, you can think of the heat being released and it is being you know the product temperature is being raised due to sen sensible enthalpy rise because it is adiabatic process even though it is non adiabatic still it will be increasing, but you will get a temperature which is lower than the adiabatic temperature. In case of some heat might be going in real system there is no adiabatic temperature as such okay. it is just a uh, what you call theoretical one. Suppose, I want to burn some fuel and oxidizer in a burner can I get adiabatic temperature it is quite difficult because some heat has to be you know uh, 
transferred to the atmosphere. Even though you can insulate, but still some amount will be going out. You cannot make insulation 100 percent, right. As a result, Q cannot be the heat transfer from the system cannot be really 0, whatever you do. So, that is the reality and uh, let us now take an example, see that under this ideal condition, ideal in the sense I do not know the composition, right, but I am assuming certain composition and composition of what? Composition of product, right, and then estimating the temperature. And keep in mind that this composition will be dependent on the final temperature that is adiabatic temperature. So, that means, they will be complementing each other. So, which you do not know. So, what we will do? We will uh, you know estimate this adiabatic temperature of pendant five C 5 S 12 with excess of 25 percent of air and both this uh, pendant and air enter at the 25 degree Celsius and assume the complete combustion. That is again assumption we are doing and we will do all these assumption the change in kinetic change in potential is 0 and Q is 0, there is no shaft work. So, the first law becomes you know H P is equal to H R. And if you look at it, this reaction is given and you can see that it is quite balanced, some amount of oxygen is there, you know excess oxygen. So, what we will do? We basically products are given like carbon dioxide, water and oxygen and then these things. So, then we can really find out what is this H p. If you look at it, it is having one component that is 5 H f of C O 2, right. That is your heat of formation term and 6 for the 6 H f water that is the you know for water and oxygen and also nitrogen. Beside this you know like it is having sensible enthalpy. Right. And here, what we are doing, you know, we are saying that C p is not really a, you know, it is remaining constant in this example. What if you look at this is C p i d t, which is the function of temperature, right. Okay. And this is 298 to t adiabatic, of course, there will be an i i is equal to 1 to uh, n, right. This term we are now evaluating and keep in mind that what we are assuming here actually C p is not changing over the range of temperature, which is not true, okay. but for the to make the problem tractable we are assuming. And then what we will do? We will have to take a average term specific heat between the temperature that is 298 to T adiabatic temperature, which is basically will be a little erroneous, but you know we can solve the problem making in you know certain amount of errors. So, that is why we have done. This is a very important assumption, please keep in mind, right. Then of course, H r we know very easily that is H f these data are given. So, these data you know H and then this H f and then these data can be obtained, you know, data are to be obtained from table, right. Which table? This is J N F table, JNF table, or as I told, it is there on the back side of my book in the given in the appendix. So, these data information, heat of formation of individual species, you can get very easily we will do that. So, then uh, from first law we know H p is equal to H r, right. And then substitute this H p and H r in that equation, then we will get how to solve that. So, if you look at, if I take this portion and this what you call portion, actually if you look at carbon dioxide and water, this portion is nothing but your heat of reactions, right this is heat of reaction. So, which is no and then we will have to you know substitute these values of C p and this must be chosen properly 
values of C P C O 2, water and then oxygen, nitrogen. Otherwise, you will land in getting a temperature which is quite different. So, therefore, judicious you know has to be, uh, it has to be chosen judiciously. But uh, from this heat of reaction, we can get this from the substituting these values. And when we will choose these values and we have taken for the C p, you know this is the C p values for the carbon dioxide and this is for the water and this is for the what you call O 2 and these values is for the C p values for nitrogen. And when you substitute these values and if you look at only unknown is T adiabatic all are known and this is a 0. So, we will get a temperature which is 18. 52.3 Kelvin. Sometimes you know this temperature would not match with whenever you will be using you know a software to estimate the adiabatic temperature. And in the software if you look at it will be taking care of the composition, what will be the composition, final composition right. So, and mostly we will be you know doing for this, this can be used for hand calculation but it may be very away from the actual data, unless otherwise you take the C p values properly that is very important, because we are making an assumptions of taking average temperature. Right. Let us look at how this adiabatic temperature which will be coming, like if I look at the C H 4 air and that is for stoichiometric mixtures right only that is inlet temperature 300 pressure is 0.1, you can get 2200 Kelvin, right. But if I will increase this pressure to what happens that 2270 Kelvin, it has come from the metan air, which is not really very much higher. That means, the temperature you know pressure is not having much effect, but however, we will see it is having certain amount of effect. Now, if I will change this to the inlet temperature to the 600 Kelvin, what you find? You will find almost 300 degree, you know kind of thing with respect to this, you know like around 230 Kelvin difference is there, right. Generally, people roughly say that you add the inlet temperature to the adiabatic temperature corresponding to the 298 or 300 Kelvin. So, you will get that. I mean that is roughly and if instead of air, if I use oxygen, what I get? I get something. 3030 Kelvin as compared to the 2200. That means, around you know 830 difference we get. And if I look at propane, you get 2278 Kelvin. If you look at most of the hydrocarbons, of course, this is the stoichiometric mixture right and uh, will be not varying, it will be hovering around 200, 2200 Kelvin right. You should keep in mind roughly. I mean 2200 to 2300 Kelvin in that range, most of the hydrocarbon air you know adiabatic uh, temperature. Whereas, if I go for hydrogen you know it is having 2390 Kelvins and of course, hydrogen oxygen will again go to the 3000 order and C O air is having 2400. This is quite interesting like how come it is having a higher temperature as compared to the hydrocarbon particularly C O air, which is quite interesting. Still people have to resolve that and keep in mind that like you may get a you know like a this kind of why it is happening you know interesting thing. So, what you can learn from here that is that means, adiabatic temperature is dependent on pressure, it is dependent on the inlet temperature and also it is dependent on the type of oxidizer or the fuel you are using except the hydrocarbon air which will be having almost you know to uh, in the range of 2000 to 2300 uh, Kelvin. Okay. So, uh, let us look at how this is that means you know it will be <coughs> depending on the inlet temperature, inlet pressure and also it will be depending on the fuel air ratio or the equivalence ratio. Let us look at how it is really varying. I have taken an example of methane air system with 300 Kelvin. If you look at adiabatic temperature is plotted with respect to equivalence ratio, right. If you look at what you are observing, you are observing that temperature is increasing you know from the lean limit you know like lean mixture, this is the lean 
mixture right this is the reach mixture right and this is of course the equivalence ratio 1 that is stoichiometric right this is your stoichiometric mixture this one right and it is increasing having a peak values over here and again it is decreasing right that means it is increasing from the very lean mixture and it goes up and then again peak value and this peak value for a hydrocarbon occurs around phi is equal to 1.05 and it decreases keep in mind the slope is very steeper in the lean side and on it is little less you know uh, steeper as compared to the lean side on the in the case of reach mixtures right why it is so it is a matter to be pondered about it and similarly when you increase this inlet temperature to 600 kelvin that is a red line which indicate the similar feature and most of the hydrocarbon mixtures will be having similar feature so also the other hydrogen air and all this thing so let us now look at how it is you know varying with initial temperature and if you look at i have taken a stoke you know three equivalence ratios methane air system one is of course uh, the one this is the phi is equal to one and uh, if you look at with inlet temperature the adiabatic temperature just increases and phi is equal to 1.5 this is phi is equal to 1.5 and this is phi is equal to 0.5 of course all are having similar features right like it is um, and keep in mind that as you go on we cannot really go beyond the 3000 Kelvin because the dissociation will be occurring. If dissociation occur then the temperature will be brought back to the you know around that number of 3000 or odd numbers. So, let us look at how this pressure you know affects that uh, adiabatic temperature if you look at it is at the lower pressure it is increasing steeply after that it is asymptotically increases and keep in mind that beyond 0.8 like kind of temperature that is uh, you know uh, the temperature increase would not be very much due to the uh, no change in chemical composition particularly at high pressure right. So, therefore, uh, I am mean like it is high pressure it is not really changing much, but in the low pressure region you know the effect is very significant in the temperature. So, now what we have discussed till now about adiabatic temperature is uh, that we assume the compositions, but whether we know this composition or not right. For example, like if I take the let us say hydrogen you know reacting with oxygen and we can always say it is going to the water. For example, if I take a container and I put some hydrogen and oxygen right with a particular proportion you know uh, what you call ratio right then what will happen can really reaction occur. For example, if I take this room and fill with hydrogen and oxygen or a air can really reaction takes place it will go to the product certainly no you need to ignite it. Of course, if you even give the initial ignition energy whether the all the hydrogen or the oxygen will be going to the water you really I mean whether it is possible or not that will be dependent on what in real situation it may not right. But of course, if the you know pressure is constant, so also the temperature is constant right, then composition chemical composition would not change. But however, how will determine what will be the composition of you know the uh, some reaction will be taking place. Keep in mind that whatever the reaction I have written here need not to be there in real situation there might be several reaction steps which will be there right, which will be involved and this is just a you know global reaction or a representative reaction overall reactions whatever it will be occurring right. Now, how to go about it we are interested to know composition because our objective is to determine the adiabatic temperature unless I know the composition I cannot estimate adiabatic temperature 
unless I know the adiabatic temperature, I cannot estimate the composition right product. That means, composition of the product. So, how to go about it? What we will have to do? We will have to basically you know <coughs> find out the state of equilibrium, how far it is reach equilibrium right. Now, question arises how to find out the state of equilibrium, because if it has gone you know some hydrogen is reacting and oxygen is going and it is going in the forward direction right to water and water can also decompose into the oxygen or uh, to the what hydrogen. Now, what in if I consider only this reaction of course, in real situation there might be several kind of reaction will be occurring, but I will just consider this reaction itself for the simplicity. Now, how we will uh, find out whether equilibrium reach because if it equilibrium may reach that means, forward reaction will be same as that of the equilibrium reaction and that of the forward reaction is will be same as that of the backward reactions right rate right, but how will go? How will say that it has reached equilibrium whether it is possible or not for that we need to invoke the second law of thermodynamics right, because that will give us the direction of the reactants you know whether it will be what is the percentage of reaction is converted you know or it is the how much will be the product. Therefore, that we need to invoke second law of thermodynamics, which states that change in entropy of the system must be greater than equal to the you know del q by t right. This we have already studied and for an adiabatic system what it would be right. It will be basically will be 0, change in entropy will be 0. That means, if it is greater than equal to 0, you know then I can system can proceed otherwise no. For example, like you want to see that whether chemical reaction proceed in what you call in particular direction or not, then there will be increase in entropy or it will be equal to the 0 right. So, let us look at how this process takes place. For example, if I say that this is 100 percent reactant right and this will be 100 percent product. For example, I am taking a hydrogen reacting with oxygen going to the product. So, but the reaction will proceed as long as the change in entropy is greater than 0 right, but it will go till it reaches a maximum point where there the change in entropy will be 0. And as this portion will be violating you know second law of thermodynamics therefore, it cannot really take place. That means, it will reach the equilibrium composition when the change in entropy will be 0 and that is valid only for what only for an adiabatic system right. But we know that in our system there will be you know several places where need not to be adiabatic right. So, then we need to think about a, you know a concept or a which is known as Gibbs free energy. We know by definition G is equal to H minus T s right and H is the enthalpy, T is the temperature, S is the entropy. So, if I just differentiate what I will do, I will get this D G is equal to D H minus T D s right and minus S D T right and we know like you know the temperature we need to remain constant. So, I can make this as a 0 like you know whenever this equilibrium is talking about. So, H then by definition H is equal to u plus P V and if I just differentiate this expression H is equal to u plus P V what I will get d H is equal to d u plus P d V and plus V d P and keep in mind that we are assuming the pressure you know in enduring equilibrium is not changing. So, this is basically 0. So, if I just substitute these values because at the constant pressure and temperature these values over here what I will get that means, d h is basically u plus p d v then I will put over in this and what I will get d z is equal to d u plus p d v minus t d s and if you look at what is this term from the first law we know that d q 
q is equal to du plus p d v. So, this term is nothing but d q, right. So, I can say that the d g is basically d q minus t d s. So, if I go to the according to the second law of thermodynamics, right, I can write down t d s is greater than equal to d q or I can write down d q minus t d s less than equal to 0, right. Because I am just saying this is greater than that, that means d q minus t d s you know will be less than equal to 0. And what is that? This we have already seen d q minus t s that is nothing but d z is less than equal to 0. So, what we will have to do in case of non adiabatic systems, we can think of you know d z will be less than equal to 0 that as a you know which is also a function of temperature, pressure and number of moles, but we will be assuming that temperature and pressure is not real changing at that moment. So, the reaction will attain its chemical equilibrium when gives function you know attains a minimum value that is change in you know gives function will be equal to 0. Let us look at uh, you know pictorially that is you know this is 100 percent reactants and 100 percent product. The process going on in this process you know till it reaches this point where the equilibrium composition live. that means we need to estimate you know equilibrium composition d z right. And, and here this is not possible in this portion that means, because it will be violating the second law of thermodynamics and therefore, we cannot really get 100 percent product in real situations right. And uh, we will see that this concept we will be using in the next class and see that how we can get the composition. Then of course, after that I will be moving into the chemical kinetics and we will also learn how this composition can be clubbed to estimate the adiabatic temperature that means, in a very iterative way that we will see in the next class.